to another video. For today's video, I wanted to make an updated video of something I had filmed about two years ago at this point, and that is how I meal plan for an entire month. Now, when I made this video two years ago, I had said in that video that I had been doing this for about two years. So I've been doing this for four years at this point. I have a system down that works, but I am still constantly learning new things. So if you guys are not familiar with my channel at all, I make a meal plan for dinners for the entire month at a time. You can see this is February's. It's a little chaotic because it's no longer February and I need to redo this. Basically at the very end of the month, I sit down and I write out meals for dinner only. I don't do lunch or breakfast because that is too much for me, but I just focus on dinners and I plan out what I'm going to cook for dinner every single night for the entire month. And I have found that this works for so many reasons. I think the biggest reason being it completely eliminates that guess of what are we gonna have for dinner tonight? What do you want for dinner tonight? What do you wanna eat tonight? I cannot imagine how annoying that question would be. I have not had to hear that question for over four years. Another huge benefit of trying to meal plan your dinners for an entire month is if you are planning on cooking that often, you are not eating out nearly as much. Now, I do know, before I go any further, I do know everybody's schedule is different. Some people do not have the physical time to cook a full meal five nights a week. I get that. That's perfectly fine. If you want to try something like this, planning a day to eat out is okay. That's totally fine. You can do that. But by planning it, you are not getting to Tuesday and being like, I don't want to cook anything. Let's just go to Jimmy John's or something. And you can say, uh, I don't really want to cook anything, but I already bought the groceries for this meal tonight. And everybody's been looking forward to this meal all week because they saw it on the calendar and they know that's what we were planning on having. So let's save our money and cook the food that we already have in the fridge. This is also great because then you are going to the grocery store significantly less and you are sticking to your grocery list significantly more. Also doing this, our supply of recipes that we have and meals that we can cook has expanded so much because I am constantly purposefully trying to incorporate new recipes to try and I'm also rotating the meals more often. I can say with pr almost 100% certainty that in the past two years, 95% of the meals that we have for dinner have not been repeated more than once every other month. Meaning, if I plan on having chicken alfredo for dinner, the absolute earliest I had chicken alfredo for dinner the last time was two months ago. And we, we have enough recipes and enough varied recipes that we could eat something different five nights a week for two months straight and not repeat any meals. And that's fantastic because then you are not getting burnt out on recipes. You are not getting just generally tired of recipes. You aren't getting complacent with recipes and saying, I have these five that I like, so I'm just gonna make these every week. Just those five repeated again and again and again and again and again. You challenge yourself when you sit down and do this because you're like, okay, I have to fill up an entire month and I wanna try to do it without repeating the same meal within a month. And I know for a lot of people that is very difficult. When we started out, I was writing down the meals that we were eating on like an actual physical calendar that you would hang up on the wall. And I would write in pen on the calendar days, like what we were eating. And looking back on those, the first year that we did this, every month, at least five recipes repeated themselves because we just didn't have that many recipes to not repeat a recipe in a single month. I mean, you have to start somewhere. What I'm going to do for this video is sit down and show you from start to finish how I plan for the entire month, what steps I take to fill an entire 30 days worth of recipes. Don't look at this and think that it is something that 
is never obtainable or that you could never do it, so why even bother trying? This is something that I've been working at for four years. It is going to take time. By all means, if you want to start meal planning, meal plan a week at a time. That way you have seven days you are looking at and it is significantly less scary that way. It gives you an idea of, okay, I can do this. Now let me try meal planning for two weeks. So I'll plan this week's meals and next week's meals and see how that goes. Work your way up to a month. I don't think doing more than a month is really wise because even just planning for a single month, things get switched around on this board constantly and that's okay. But let me clear off this board, switch the camera angles and get into showing you exactly how I plan my dinners for an entire month. All right, so here is my empty calendar that I use. I've upgraded recently to a dry erase calendar. I used to have a chalkboard calendar, which I loved, but I used it so much it became unusable. So now we have this beautiful dry erase one. So once I have erased last month's meal plan, the very first thing I do is fill in the new month's month and days. Once that is done, I mark out the days that I know ahead of time I am not cooking. That includes days that we are eating elsewhere, days that we just plan on having leftovers. And for us, we only plan on not cooking two days a week. So every Sunday, that's a rest day. I usually never cook on Sundays, so that is a leftover day. And on Wednesdays we have church and before service we all get together for sort of a potluck dinner together so I'm also not cooking on Wednesdays. Now figuring out what days you are not cooking will take practice and figuring out what works for you but over time this is what is currently working best for us. So once you have that figured out the very next thing that I then think about is how often do I want to cook certain types of food? Meaning do I want to have chicken only once a week? Do I want to have fish once a week? How often throughout the month am I wanting to have pasta? Or do I want every Tuesday to be Taco Tuesday? Knowing what sort of meals you consciously repeat is what you want to fill in next. Now for us, that is fish. I really try to incorporate fish once a week in our meal plans. And over time, it just happened to work out best that we cook fish on Fridays for no reason. It just ended up working out the best way that it was on a Friday. So the next thing that I do is I fill out all of my Friday meals with fish recipes. Also, because I have all of these fun colored markers, I like to designate all of my different recipes as like different colors. So at a glance, I know like what's a new recipe, what's a side dish, what's the main dish and all of that fun stuff. So I'm gonna start using more fun colors now. All right, so I have the main dishes for Friday figured out. I went ahead and added the first through the third of April down here as well, because I'm grocery shop once a week. So it wouldn't make sense for me to go grocery shopping on this Monday for only these three days and then have to go again when I redo April's meal plan. So I'm just gonna plan the first three days of April in this bunch as well. So right alongside doing the main dishes, I add in what I'm having as sides with them as well. You're gonna notice that during the majority of these meals, we have salad with it. So that is going to be a very common side. After I have that figured out, I well actually technically before I do that, what I do is I will go to my freezer and take an inventory of all of the fish and meat that we have in the freezer. That way I know exactly what we have already that needs to be used up. And typically then if I have any fish in the freezer, I will incorporate that into these Friday dishes, which in the case I had two pounds of salmon in there, which is what these two recipes are. At this stage, I combine two different steps and that is filling in recipes that use the meat I already have in the freezer and filling in new recipes. I really tried to do a new recipe every week at this point because I have a lot of cookbooks that are just sitting there otherwise. So I need to start incorporating them. <laughs> Typically I will fill in the new recipes first and see if any of them need to use the meat that I have in the freezer already. Also my writing is not going to be very clean because I can't lay my hand down on this and write with having everything like this. Typically, 
I have all of this written out on a piece of paper like this ahead of time. And then I fill in day by day so I can just lay my hand as I write. Can't do that the way I'm showing you. So just, you'll have to bear with my very rough handwriting. Now the placement of where these new recipes are for the most part is random. I am filling out this meal plan knowing that I am home every evening. It's completely under my control of what days I wanna put it on because it doesn't matter that much. So now looking at the rest of these days that I have open that I need to fill in with something, I'll take into consideration the meat we have in the freezer that, I, that we need to use up and I will make sure to incorporate those in places. I will also take into consideration what is already on this board and the ingredients that go along with that. But keep in mind, if I know from experience that certain ingredients go farther and I have leftover, how I can incorporate those into other different meals. For example, the end of February, we made chicken tamale pie and that uses enchilada sauce. We have leftover enchilada sauce, meaning today, the first, we're gonna make some enchiladas. But keeping that in mind, I know the enchilada sauce we have is not going to be quite enough for enchiladas, so I'm gonna have to make a little more meaning we will most likely have leftover again. So what I'm going to do then is over here, we're gonna make some homemade pizza, making sure that at least one of those pizzas is a Mexi pizza where the base is enchilada sauce. And that will help use up the rest of the enchilada sauce that we have left over. And don't worry about it being nearly two weeks later because enchilada sauce keeps, that's totally fine. So looking at what we have in the freezer, what we need to use up, we do have some leftover chicken breast in the freezer. So I'm going to make some baked mac and cheese because we also have elbow macaroni in the cabinet with some chicken breast on the side and salad. We also have half a bag of raviolis in the freezer. So I'm gonna make some ravioli soup. We also have brats in the freezer. Another thing that I'll look at is this smoked pork shoulder that we are doing on this Tuesday. That is going to have a lot of leftovers. So I was thinking of having tacos this month because we have not had tacos in quite a while. I think what we are going to do is we are going to make tacos the day before and plan on making lots of fixings for the tacos, except for extra meat. We have a pound of ground beef I will use for the tacos, but I'll make extra of everything else. Because almost without fail, the first ingredient of a taco that runs out is the meat. So what we will do then is we will have tacos this day, we'll make a pork shoulder the next day, and then leftovers, we can put the smoked pork shoulder in for the taco meat. And I know that is not going to use up that pork shoulder entirely, so that will last a week for sure in the fridge. So any leftovers we have, we're gonna make some cowboy burgers with, and that's essentially a cheeseburger that you put like pulled pork and French fried onions and barbecue sauce as well on. Something else that I like to keep in mind is meat that is going on sale. A lot of times during the weeks that I'm grocery shopping, I will look if there is meat that is on sale for a good price, I will get it and incorporate it into next month's meal plan. And in this case, it's March. There's corned beef on sale all up until St. Patty's Day. So I know I will be getting some corned beef pretty cheap in one of these weeks. So toward the end of the month, I think we're gonna have some Reuben sandwiches. Now at this point, I have six recipes left to fill in. And basically all I do is I go through my recipes and look at what I have, what I haven't cooked in a while, and I fill those in based on what I want to make and what kind of fits with what I'm already planning on making. And just like that, the meal plan is done. So that is how to meal plan for an entire month. I will say the biggest tool that I use to help me do this effectively is the recipe app that I use, which is Organize Eat. And my channel's way too small. This isn't sponsored or anything. This is just something that I have been using for almost four years at this point. I'll have it on the screen so you can see it. Basically, this is a recipe book for your phone. 
So you can put in all of your recipes, whether you wanna just take a picture of the recipe, whether you wanna type it out, you can put pictures of what the finished product looks like, which is so helpful for me. You can add notes and tweaks and adjust things on there. And that is how I keep all of my recipes organized. You can have different folders for everything and you can have the same recipe in multiple folders. So things like teriyaki salmon burgers that I am having later on this week that you saw me put in there. That is in my fish folder and my sandwich folder because it is a sandwich. It works so well for keeping things organized. Then also I will put in, there's a little tag section that you can put tags. So some recipes I will have tags that say Thanksgiving. That way when Thanksgiving comes, I can just put into the search bar Thanksgiving and every recipe I have that tag in will pop up. So you know all of the good Thanksgiving recipes that you have without having to have like an actual folder for that. And I will put tags for the last three months that I cooked that meal. And what that does is that helps me keep meals in a good rotation where I am not cooking the same thing two months in a row. And I am giving all of the recipes that we cook a break so that we don't get burnt out of them. We don't eat them too often. And it keeps all of the recipes that we like special and exciting when we go to cook them. So like I was saying, tacos, we haven't had tacos in probably two months or more. I know that because every time we eat tacos, I put in that tag the month that we ate them. So when I'm doing the recipe, I can look and be like, oh, December 2020 was the last time we made tacos. This is March, it's time to make tacos again. And then I can also look to be like, oh wow, it's been almost a year since we've cooked this. Why did we not cook it for so long? Do we want to revisit it? I even have a couple recipes in there that we used to cook a lot that now Dan is like, I don't think I like this so much anymore. And it's not because we cooked it too much. It's just because taste buds change. So I have the recipe in there still, but I have a note that says Dan doesn't like this so much or Julie doesn't like this anymore. And that helps us know not to cook things anymore, but we kept the recipe because it's a good recipe and somebody else might want to try it. This is a huge, huge help with this app is you can put notes for meals you are trying. And that is such a big help because if you try, especially if you are trying a new meal for the first time and you cook it and everything and you sit down and you eat it and you're like, this is good, but we definitely should have added more salt to it. Or this is good, but the recipe called to cook the chicken for this long and it definitely did not need to cook that long. All of those notes will help you make the recipe that much more delicious the next time you cook it, if you wanna cook it again. If you don't write those down, when you go to revisit the recipe, you won't remember, so you'll cook it the same way again, and it'll suck again, and then you just will pass it off as being a bad recipe, which it's not, it can be improved. So Dan and I make a point every time we make a new recipe, if there are little things we want to tweak about it, I will type down what those different notes and tweaks and adjustments are. That way, when we go to do it again, I have all of those notes and we can incorporate them and the recipe then tastes really good. And then finally, the very, very last thing that I do when I make these meal plans, which I didn't show you on this example because I had already done this before I filmed this video, is I do it on, on these a lot when I take a piece of paper and just make something quick and like sketch it, write everything out to figure out what I'm making. Once you have the whole month filled out of what you are cooking for dinner, look it over to make sure that you aren't cooking something too similar, too close together. Like you don't want to have tacos one night and then do fish tacos the next night and then chicken tacos the night after that. As much as I love tacos, that is a bit overkill. And you also maybe want you want to try to avoid having pasta very often. So you need to look and look at your recipes once you had everything filled out and say, okay, ooh, we're actually having spaghetti this day and shrimp scampi two days later. That's a bit too much pasta too close together. So let me move spaghetti to this day instead and I'll switch those two recipes around. And little tweaks like that just to get it as diverse and as balanced as you can. Every palette is different. 
every preference is different, so you might be totally fine with having a ton of pasta because currently that's all you know how to cook and you don't want to ruin a bunch of recipes because you're trying to cook things just so you don't have pasta but you don't know how to cook anything other than pasta. It's totally fine. Start where you are. If, again, if you have to just do a week at a time and you are cooking the same five meals every week, pull out one of those meals and insert a new recipe that you've never tried before. Every week, keep growing your recipes and that way pretty soon you will be able to go several weeks without repeating a single recipe. Your cooking skills will improve, so much will improve, and you will have a great time. But that is how I meal plan for an entire month. Some people think it's crazy, some people think it's fantastic. Let me know in the comments if anything that I said was unclear or if you have any further questions, I would be so happy to answer them for you and to help try to make this as clear as possible. It's really difficult to explain it when I don't have you sitting here to directly ask me a question so I can clarify something. So if any of this didn't make sense or if you are curious about anything, please leave your questions in the comments below so I can answer them and address them and try to help you out as best as you can. Because I think this is a great way to save money and grow your knowledge of cooking, your love for cooking and the recipes that you can cook with. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will stop rambling because I already know this is going to be quite long. I hope you guys have had a great day. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoy attempting to meal plan and please let me know how it goes. Bring me along for your journey and I will see you in the next video. Bye!